You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. Always appreciate when we get a couple of minutes from Heather Dinich, ESPN's college football playoff expert. Her uh, bracketology coming out weekly now during the season. Heather joins us. How are you, Heather? I'm terrific. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Uh, before we delve into the news of the week, we have to settle something here. Um, yep. So, ever since you started doing your version of bracketology, mm -hmm. uh, our audience has tried to come up with a nickname for you, like Joe Lenardi, right? He's Joey right. Brackets. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've, we've, we've worked. Do you have one, by the way? <laughs> Everybody has a great nickname, okay. right? So what's yours? Um, are you asking, you're yeah. asking me what? Do you I, can't, I can't nickname myself. <laughs> okay, no, that's, so that's what I was asking, if you had one already. Okay, good. All right, oh. well, let's, let's, let's do this. Okay, so yeah. mm -hmm. we workshopped it for several weeks now. This yep. is what we've come up with. Just give me your immediate reaction. We'll see if any of these land. Uh, okay. Eh, playoff Heather? Uh-uh. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> Heather the projector. Ah, uh, I feel like a like a video screen. Uh, right, right. Uh, <laughs> Heather brackets. Uh, mm. Um, Denny's dozen. Uh, uh, no, uh, no. Oh, uh. Wow. Uh, we're running out. Like, I mean, there's this one, uh, which I don't know that anybody's gonna be okay with. A uh, CFP Denny. Uh, in, in light of recent things with. Uh, well. With, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. So, because it rhymes, literally, because it rhymes, I've been going with HD on the CFP. Only because it rhymes. <laughs> okay. Uh, HD on the CFP. That's a little bit of a word salad. Or a, it is. A, a, it or, is. Or alphabet soup. But, um, all right, would you, this just me. Look, you just absolutely just whitewashed all of our, all of our <laughs> best. So, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board. Audience, be more creative. We got to do better. Heather hates them all. Um, okay, I, I don't know what's harder, coming up with a nickname for you or trying to do your bubble watch. What is the toughest yep. part of doing this each week? Well, it's twofold. One is getting into the committee's mind, and then two, explaining to college football fans who are so conditioned to the Associated Press poll and the coaches poll that when I put out what the committee's is going to look like, they can't. It doesn't process, does not compute, right? Because it doesn't line up. And this is, it, it's been a little bit different each week, but this one is the one where it was significantly different. And I think it would be very difficult if the committee were meeting today to move Alabama behind Georgia like the AP voters did. Because head to head results in the committee meeting room are very important, and everyone in the SEC knows this because what happened last year, Texas went to Alabama, beat them head-to-head -head in Tuscaloosa by double digits. And weeks later on Selection Day, what were we talking about as one of the biggest games of the season? Mm -hmm. The head-to-head -head result. Now, if Alabama continues to play poorly, if they lose another game and they're no longer sitting there even with one loss, then you can toss that out the window. Right, and the reason Vanderbilt isn't ahead of Alabama is because they have two losses. The right. records are not comparable, so that opens the door for the committee to say, you know what? Even though they lost that game, we think they're a better team, just like they did one year a few years ago with Michigan and Michigan State. Heather, one of the thing I'm glad you brought up trying to get in the committee's minds um, is one of the things that I found. Like you, I mean, this is what you do professionally, so obviously you you cover it way more closely. But the committee tends to find the path of least resistance. Um, if there's a two-loss team and a one-loss team, generally the one-loss team is generally. I mean, there was Florida State last year, but that was a great outlier. So mm -hmm. have you noticed, or uh, talking to committee members, obviously we won't know this until we get to December, but what types of changes going from 4 to 12, like what types of changes and considerations might there be for the committee as opposed to what it used to be? Well, I think the biggest difference is going to be how they weigh teams with multiple losses who played a more challenging schedule, cough, cough, SEC, Big Ten, yep. against teams with fewer losses that played a less challenging schedule. And 
The conference championship games take the guesswork out of part of this because the five highest-ranked conference championships champions are getting in this thing. I don't care if you're a four-loss team. If you win the SEC, you are in. Now, it could change where you're seated. You could lose a first-round bye if you're the fifth-highest-ranked conference champ as the ACC or the Big 12, and Boise State's ranked ahead of you hmm. as the fourth-highest-ranked conference champ. Mm-hmm. Right. So that is something to consider. But when it comes to those seven at-large bids, that's where the selection committee could really have this tug-of-war between, yeah, well, LSU lost three games, but look who they lost to compared with Clemson lost one game, they lost to Georgia, but look at the rest of Clemson's schedule. Come on, man. And so you're going to have those conversations in the committee meeting room. Do you think Heather Dinich is our guest on Twitter X at CFB Heather? Make sure you give her a follow. Do you think that the um, even if it's a subconscious and and not spoken reality, Heather, that in that committee room there is going to be a desire to balance the wealth, so to speak, so as there isn't say five or six bids from the SEC or the Big Ten. No, I don't, I don't believe that at all. Okay. And, and this goes back to the very first year, the very first ranking a decade ago. I remember when it. Barry Alvarez was in there. You remember what it, what it was? There were three was, SEC West teams in there. That's exactly right. And ever since that day, the answer to that question is no. But Heather, those, the, none of those teams got in the playoff, though. It's easy to well, do it in the first ranking, but the final ranking is where it's is the one that matters, right? Well, a hundred percent, but the picture, the picture changes, right? Obviously, but they're not sitting there going, whoa, we have five big 10 teams. I promise you that. I mean, I have done at least half a dozen mock selections as a member of the media. And when you go in there and you sit around the table and you're in their chairs and you're looking at the same data that they're looking at, having the same conversations it's not in your head either. It's not in my head. You're sitting there and you're looking and you're like, well, this team beat that team and this team has a terrible loss. And all of a sudden you are swallowed whole <laughs> by the resume and what you remember from watching in the season and all of those things. And I promise, like, I mean, is there somebody in there who's like, whoa, we have 10 SEC teams? I mean, maybe, but that's just not, it's just not how it works. Um. Why, uh, in, in your bracketology today, uh, you yep. have LSU first among the first four out. Why do you hate LSU, Heather? <laughs> LSU needs to show a little bit more against some better competition. I mean, the win at South Carolina is the best win they've got going right now. Uh, back-to-back wins against U- UCLA and South Alabama. They're trending in the right direction, but again, let's... Let's see what happens against Ole Miss and then move on from there. Because remember, this bubble watch that I'm doing is a snapshot to date. So when you look at 4-1 and one for LSU, what's the best win at South Carolina? How does that line up with others? And how does they look on the field? Um, a win against Nichols is not going to move the needle in the selection committee meeting room mm-hmm. or a win against South Alabama. Or UCLA, you know? So it's a matter of adding to that playoff resume and looking good in the process. I'm glad you, you said that the first part, Heather. Like, this is what you do each week. It's a snapshot of today. This is not a projection of what you think is going to happen at the end of the season. It's if it worked today, this is right. how it would look. Um, okay, so which team, maybe just one or two more, which team for you in doing this exercise was the hardest to, to, to place, to gauge, what, what was the hardest decision? Definitely Alabama. I mean, you're, you're sitting there and you're like, that's a bad loss. That is a complex character because they have the best win in the country right now, today. That still matters, and the head-to-head matters. But they have the second worst loss. The only other team with a worst loss is Notre Dame Notre at Dame. home to Northern Illinois. So when you're sitting there and you, you – Factor in a horrible loss with the best win and the head-to-head result. At the end of the day, you're like, well, I can't move them past Georgia. And then you're like, wait a minute. If I can't move them past Georgia, I got Texas. I got Ohio State. 
good grief. I have Alabama at three. Do I? I do. You know why? Because Penn State's not the number four team in the country. Come on. Not today they're not. Oregon? What has Oregon done to be one of the top five teams? Have they looked like a top five team? Did you see the Idaho State game? So when you go through and you look at these other teams and you do a deeper dive on who played who and looked like what, Alabama's at number three. Mm. It, um, it's going to be fascinating to watch how it all plays out. Uh, last thing, um, the, the G5 component of all of this, um, do you have a, a, a good sense on how you think that, that plays out? Because I, I don't know that there's a, real, there's a real easy answer there either, Heather, and somebody's getting in. <laughs> they are. And no, I don't have the answer. I mean, just based on what we've seen to this point, Boise State looks like the most talented group of five team. And I've talked to their coach, Spencer Danielson. When you go to Oregon and almost beat them in Austin, that's real. <laughs> All right? We're talking about Ohio State going into odds and, and beating them. So they've got a Heisman hopeful in the running back, Ashton Genty, who just goes for 200 yards every time he hits the field. He's a really special player. That's something the selection committee likes. They've got to play UNLV, obviously, in the Mountain West. They're in the same conference. That's what else I love about this. There are people all over the country who don't know what conference these group of five teams are in, <laughs> where they are, right? You know? And so it's a learning curve for a lot of college football fans who are just in their own little world, and it's opening the door to some more teams and some more fan bases, which is super fun. By the way, Army and Navy are both in the American, for those that don't know, and they're both undefeated, mm -hmm. and they could be part of this conversation as well as we move forward. Uh, she is uh, Heather Brackets. <laughs> she is CFP Denny. Uh, HD on the CFP? <laughs> HD on the CFP? I don't know. We'll, we'll keep workshopping it. We'll do better next time. Heather, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks so much. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.